Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will explain how to group resources in the Blazor scheduler layout in both the calendar and timeline views. I will also discuss the other advanced grouping options available in the Sync Fusion Blazor scheduler. Here, if you look at this room scheduler, the timeline view is grouped with multiple resources where each row represents a resource. The appointments of each resource are displayed on its respective rows. Now, let me move on to how to group the resources in the scheduler layout. First, I will open the existing Blazor application, where I have already configured the resource data for the Blazor scheduler. If you are new to adding resource data and its appointments to the Blazor scheduler, please watch my previous video and then come back to this one to have a better understanding. I have shared the link to that video in the description below. Now, I will run this application to show you the output of this example. Look at the scheduler output here, where you can find the appointments of the resources using different colors. Let me show you how to group the single level resources in this scheduler layout. To do so, I will define a property group data of type string array and assign the value tasks to it. Here, this string is nothing but the unique resource names that are assigned to each resource within the schedule resource tag to identify them among the other resource collections. Then, within the schedule group tag, I will assign this group data to the resources property. When you look at the output here, you can see each resource occupying its own space within the same scheduler layout, and the appointments of each resource are grouped accordingly in their own space. I have simply shown how to define a single level resource hierarchy, but with the Sync Fusion Blazor scheduler, you can display n levels of resources by establishing parent child relationships. Now, I will show you how to group multi-level resources to the Blazor scheduler. To add another resource, first I need to define one more schedule resource tag inside the schedule resources collection. Then, within this resource data model class, I will add three more properties named person ID, person name, and person color and assign an array of objects to them. Next, I will define T item and T value properties with the appropriate values to specify this resource data source type and the field type of the resource ID. Now, I will assign this object resource data to the data source property of resource collection. While defining the second level resource collection, the data source for this second level should be provided with an additional group ID field that maps with its predecessor data's exact ID value. Therefore, let me define one more property resources group ID inside this resource data model class and assign appropriate values to it. I will assign this resource group ID to the group ID field property of the resource collection. Here, this group ID field will help you map the particular resource under its predecessor data and help the scheduler understand that it is the child data belonging to this parent resource. So, when I provide the value 1 for this group ID, it means that this is a child resource to the resource in the first level that has the same ID as 1. Now, how will we relate the resources with appointment objects when using multiple levels of resources? For this, we need to define a property resource ID of type integer and map its value inside the appointment object. In my previous video on multiple resources, I explained resource fields, so now, I will start to define those fields in the resource collection. I will define the properties field, title, name, text field, ID field and color field with appropriate values. Next comes the allow multiple property, where I provide the value true. By setting the value as true, you can select multiple resources in the editor window. Finally, I need to pass this newly added resource name to the group data. Now when you look at the scheduler, you can see that the resources are grouped in two levels. At the first level, you can see development and testing. And at the second level, you can see the resources John, Robert, and Steve. Notice that in the first level, the support resource is missing. This is because when you define two levels of resources, if your second level doesn't have any mapper to the resources in the first level, then it will be automatically truncated from the layout. Suppose, I want to group the resources hierarchically, then, I need to set the by group ID property as false, and remove the group ID field. Here, you can see the resources are grouped hierarchically, regardless of the resource ID mapper in the resource collection. 
have a look at the appointments that are grouped under their appropriate resources. Whenever you have multiple levels of grouping, the colors of the appointments are usually decided based on the colors assigned to the innermost level of resources, so, the colors assigned to John, Robert, and Steve will be reflected on the appointments now. The important note here is, the order of resource names that you pass to this resource property. The resources will be grouped on the scheduler layout based on this order. Here, the first resource name acts as a parent, and the second resource name will act like a child that is mapped under the given parent resource. Next, I will show you how to group the resources based on date. You can see here that the scheduler is grouped based on resources by default. To group the resources based on date, I just need to set the by date option as true within the schedule group tag. Now, you can see under each of these dates that the resources are grouped with their individual spaces. So far, we have seen resource grouping in calendar views, so let's see the grouped layout in timeline scheduler views, where you can see the resources and their relevant appointments as individual rows. That's everything, so let's quickly recap this session. We have seen how to group multiple resources in the Blazor scheduler. You simply define the group data source and map it with the required appointments. We have also seen how to group the resources based on dates in the Blazor scheduler. If you would like to see a working example of this, you can download one from the GitHub link provided in the description for this video. I have also provided a link where you can see if you are eligible for our community license, which would grant you a free license key to use all of our Blazor products. If you find this video useful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned to see what's next.